What's up my Yu-Gi-Oh bros? I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB0. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. Today, the second part of the ban list according to Logic, January 2015 video series. Today, I am talking about cards that might get a boost on this ban list. I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently this time. Since Raigeki and Glow Up Bulb and Goyo Guardian all came back on the last couple of lists, I pretty much decided that we cannot decide ahead of time what Konami is going to bring back off the ban list. What I have instead is a chart, and that chart is a list of all of the cards that are currently forbidden, limited, or semi-limited in order of how much of an impact they will have on the game. And I'm going to talk about the lowest impact cards on that list because it strikes me that so far, since the split between the TCG and the OCG, Konami has been bringing back cards which they predict will have a very low impact on the game. But before I get to that, there is one card that I didn't talk about during my limiting video that I think really needs to be talked about. Yeah, Wing Blast gets its own subheader. Yes, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast has become a fairly ubiquitous card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Compulsory Evacuation Device was limited more than a year ago. What makes us think that now that it's so popular, and now that it's free for most Burning Abyss plays, that Konami's not going to hit Compulsory Time Seal Device to one as well? Getting back to our original content, though, I'm going to shoot you guys over to a screen capture of the spreadsheet itself. Behold the Divine Spreadsheet. Notice how I have things split up between Banned, Limited, Semi-Limited, and Low, Medium, and High Impact. Since Konami does seem to gauge whether or not they should bring something back on the impact it's going to have on the game, whether it's positive or negative, they do seem to be bringing the cards back that have the lowest impact on the current meta. So let's start by talking about cards on the ban list. We, of course, have the Baby Rulers, which I feel would have absolutely zero impact on the meta right now. The Dragon Rulers being at one really makes them totally unplayable, particularly with Soul Charge at one and with Skill Drain going to one on the current list that I'm working on. The game is just too fast for the Dragon Rulers. Let's move on to Demok. Demok, the Dark Magician of Chaos, has been on the ban list for a good long while, but the problem with it right now is there isn't really a deck in the game that can abuse it. You can kind of run it in Shadows, but they don't really have an effective way of putting it on the board without doing crazy D fusion plays that are fairly suboptimal, particularly in deck where you're running a level 8 vanilla essentially while it's in your hand. Elemental Hero Stratos would have very minimal impact on the game right now, and with heroes coming out in the near future, I think that it is a likely candidate to be coming back on the list, I think that its ability to search multiple times per turn is really nothing unique in the game right now. There are about a half a bajillion decks in the meta right now that can do that anyway. Rescue Cat is my next one on the list. Really, the only deck that this would impact is maybe Raccoons. And I'm really, really not concerned about raccoons wrecking the meta. Sangin, the ability to search once per turn is just not that great. You have to put it on the field before it's going to work, and it just would not have a huge impact on the meta, particularly seeing as the deck that it would be used in for the most part is Burning Abyss, which can also search multiple times per turn on its own. Sinister Serpent is a dead plus one that you get during your standby phase. It doesn't do a huge amount. It would maybe have some kind of impact on Mermails, but it's so slow in its return to your hand that it really would not give them the speed that they would need to come back. Let's move on to Tribe Infecting Virus. I've been talking about this card for a long time because I think Tribe Infecting Virus is a god-awful card. I think that it is a Raigeki, which we already have in the game, that requires you to use your normal summon and only destroys one type of monster on the field, which means that you are using up the instigator for your plays in order to make a play that you can already make just with Raigeki. And there's also the possibility that you could have to discard multiple times per turn in order to entirely clear your opponent's field because we do have decks in the game right now that run multiple types of monsters. Not only that, but destruction itself is actually absolutely off of this format. Victory Dragon is a non-special summonable vanilla, and if you're losing to Victory Dragon, you might as well just lose the match because clearly you've done something really messed up. There's really no good way of summoning Victory Dragon easily and removing your opponent's last few life points with it. I really don't see why it has any reason to be 
banned right now. Yes, it is potentially stupid that if you win with this card, you won't get to play out the rest of your duels, but really, really, if you're losing to Victory Dragon, a 2400 non-special summonable vanilla, then you know what? Maybe you should be losing the match. Yadagarasu, yet another normal summon that doesn't really do a huge amount. You have to blow up the board in order to use it, and it does remove your opponent's next draw phase, but honestly, like, how much is that going to do to our game right now? If you're playing against Burning Abyss or against Shadows, you're taking up your normal summon in order to remove their draw phase if their monsters are cleared from the board. This is not going to be a main deck choice ever, and it's not something you would put in your side deck because it's just something you're only going to draw as a one-up. As a one-up, Yadakarasu is A-OK. -okay. We do not have Chaos Emperor Dragon in the game right now. We can deal with one Yadakarasu. Besides that fact, the only deck that isn't going to float if you clear their board right now is Clifford's. And you know what they run? Frickin' Skill Drain. Dark Strike Fighter now has its current errata, which makes it an essentially useless card, so I have really no problem with it coming off the list. It would just have very little impact on the game. Tishula is a little bit of a wild card. It's not entirely clear whether or not it's going to have a huge impact on the game. However, there aren't really any consistent synchro decks out there right now, so I'm really not worried about Tishula making a major impact on the game. It's a high-cost monster and it has a really good effect, but you have to put in a lot of resources in order to make it. There just aren't really any decks that consistently can put those resources on the board right now. Maybe once the Synchrons come out, that would have an impact on the game, but that's a long time in the future, and it would also help Konami to make some profit. Wind Up Carrier Zen Mighty also would have absolutely zero impact on the game right now. Wind Ups are awful because Magician is at one. There are also decks that can do combos like Wind Ups, but do them better, so you know what? Also, Shock Mask isn't in the game right now. So, like, what are we really worried about from wind-ups? Dragon Ravine to one. Honestly, how much would this do to the game right now? Even with the Dragon Rulers not banned, I think the Dragon Ravine coming back to one would make no impact. I've said it before. Even if the Dragon Rulers went to three and Dragon Ravine went to three, nothing would happen in this meta. The Dragon Rulers would show up at, like, one tournament and then everybody would remember, oh yeah, these suck in comparison to Shadows and in comparison to Burning Abyss. And they even have a really awful matchup against Klee. Ring of Destruction. Once again, a destruction card. Yes, it's a one-for-one. One. We already have one-for-one one removal that can get around things that protect you from being destroyed. Ring of Destruction would have zero impact on the game. The only reason why Konami might not bring this back is because Konami really doesn't like tie games. Dime Seal is another card that I really don't think is going to have much of an impact on the game if it came back to one. Yes, some noobs might run it once it came out, but honestly, in competitive play, it's a really awful card. You go minus one in order to hope that your opponent can't draw next turn. Even if it was, it was at three, if you used three of them in a row, like, what have you done? You've simplified your game state by three in order to stop your opponent maybe a couple turns down the road. We don't need our draw phase that much, particularly if you're simplifying your own game state in order to get rid of it. Moving on to the limited low impact cards, you can take a look for a second at the cards that I have on my high and mid level impact on the band list. The low impact limited cards right now include Fire Fist Spirit, honestly. The loop is really good, but it just, Fire Fist are just so bad right now that even with Spirit at 2, maybe we'd see 3.5 access do like something like once or twice a format at regionals, but it's really not going to have an impact on the game. Just because Bear is the best card in the deck, and it doesn't do anything. And there are decks already that can put tons of monsters on the board with advantage in the process that can float afterward and have much better setup than the 3.5 Axis Fire Fist deck has. Dandelion, just wouldn't do anything. Nobody plays it, they wouldn't play it if it was at 2. Deep Sea Diva, same thing. Special summoning from the deck is not unique, and there aren't really as many OTKs you can pull with Mermails when they only have one Gunda and one Dragoons. Gladiator Beast, Bestiari. Uh, Gladiator Beasts aren't doing anything now, they wouldn't do anything if Bestiari was at 3. Glow Up Bulb going to multiples wouldn't make, make an impact because nobody would run it at more than 1 because you can, can only use it once per duel. Insector Hornet, once again, destruction is awful. 
I put Dragonfly in the mid-impact level because Dragonfly special summons from the deck, and that's a little better, especially with Hornet at multiples. Dragonfly might have more of an impact on the game, particularly since Insectors really do have the potential to OTK with multiple Dragonflies and multiple Hornets. Grand Mole. Once again, nobody's using it now. Nobody would use it at two. It uses up your normal summon to get rid of a card that something like Compulsory Evacuation Device or Phoenix Wing Wind Blast can get rid of already without using your normal summon. Plus, it's vulnerable, it's deprisonable, it's warningable. All those fun things can get rid of Grand Mole. Wind Up Magician. Once again, if Wind Up Magician went to multiples, maybe with both that and Zen Mighty, leaving their current place on the list, we would see wind-ups make some kind of difference since they can make loops and OTKs like that. But once again, Shockmaster is out of the game right now, so I don't see what real impact wind-ups would have on the game, short of some OTKs that are totally stoppable with the amount of removal that's currently in the game right now. Doolorin really keeps getting juggled around on the list. I really think Konami should just take it off the list and leave it there because really realistically, they are worried about all of these loopy combos that just nobody uses. Goyo going to multiples wouldn't have much of an impact because nobody runs it at one, nobody would run it at two. I guess Yang Zings would have the chance to make multiple Goyos in a game, but other than that, like, it's a really one-of card, whether or not it is at one. Once again, X Sabers are not a deck. She to two. Once again, very little impact on the game. Six Samurai are pretty much awful right now. They did 2-0 Shadows, but I, I'm currently considering that a fluke. Even if they had multiple Shien's, they'd probably just go for one Shien at the beginning of the duel, and then maybe if they could get the monsters for the second, they would, but by that time, your opponent's going to have some outs ready. Meryl from the different dimension isn't doing any. A lot of these are very conditional as to whether or not something else comes back. The big dragon rulers are on my mid-level impact list just because of the possibility that they could make a difference in the game through some kind of combos, particularly if Bur Burial from the Different Dimension came back to two, then they'd have a couple more cards that could give them some toolboxing power to put them in the game a little more, but Burial from the Different Dimension on its own really isn't going to have any impact on the game. Once again, Dark Hole, nobody's using it at one, nobody will use it at two. We already have Raigeki, and I cannot see people using two Dark Holes and a Raigeki in their deck, even if they are running Yang Zing. One Day of Beast was reserved for the degenerate combos that Konami has already killed. One for one, nobody's using it. It's a it's a minus one in basically every deck that could use it, so it's not like it's a plus from the deck. This is a card that was really good in like 2010, but has since totally dropped off the face of the earth. Spellbook of Fate. Spellbooks are slow and they don't do much. So Spellbook at Fate being at 2 wouldn't have much of an impact. Since having multiple Fates is really only a threat if the Spellbook engine itself is a threat, and right now it just isn't. Infernity Barrier. Infernities are dead. Why is this still at 1? Torrential Tribute. Once again, destruction is awful. The OCG has multiples and it makes very little impact on their game, and currently we could probably survive having multiples as well. It would make Cleese a much easier matchup, too, for something like Neckloth. Wall of Revealing Light, I suppose, would have slightly more of an impact on the other ones in this, just because it stops attacks for as long as you want it to, just at the cost of a little bit of life, but honestly, who would use it at two? So there is the rest of my mid-level limited section. Let's finally move over to the level three section, the semi-limited section. Notice how there are a couple of orange things on here. Orange things are ha things that might have a greater impact on the game, but might have a greater impact on the game in a positive direction in terms of Konami's profit. We start off with Blackwing Gale. Once again, it's not doing anything at two, wouldn't do anything at three. Same thing with Card Trooper. Troop Dupe Scoop really is not a thing anymore. Gores to three. Once again, nobody uses it at two, nobody would use it at three. Same thing for Turgodia. Hieratic Seal. Hieratics are dead. And Rhoda is at 3. I don't understand why the Hieratic Rhoda should be at 2. Reasoning. Another thing that nobody uses at 2 and nobody use, would use at 3 because it's a bad card. It is a guesswork card. It's real sacky. Ojama Trio is a card that would be a 2 of whether or not it was at 3. It used to be a card that really slowed down the game, but Scapegoat is at 3 right now, so Ojama Trio really doesn't make sense to have it semi-limited. And finally, the Transmigration Prophecy. Once again, not doing anything at 2 wouldn't do anything at 3. Once again, there are also... No loops that anybody will realistically participate in with this card because it's just it's just really slow to make that loop and you have to depend on yourself making it to the end of the game and that's just like if you get decked out by transmigration prophecy then you really deserved it. Summoner Monk is an orange 
highlighter thing because it would make a substantial impact on the hero deck, but I think that that's something that Konami wants to see. And then finally, Reborn Tengu would make a very high impact on the game through Synchro Variants and through Shadows being able to use Wendigo and stuff like that. But, I mean, Wendigo is a pretty awful card, but the Reborn Tengu would allow you to get your plus off of it and make some Shadow Fusion plays. That would be pretty darn cool. So, I think that those are the cards that are the most likely out of all the cards currently on the list to come off. We can't actually make any real prediction as to whether or not Konami is going to bring back any of these things, or if they do, which one is going to come back. But the things that are low impact on these lists are the things that are most likely to come off on this list. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.